Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Molecular Basis of Inheritance. So in this video, we will cover uh, how the lactose operon functions, that is in which case, which scenario it will be on for transcription and in which scenario it will be off for transcription and translation, subsequent translation of the mRNA. In the previous video, we have discussed only the structure. Uh, first, we have understood what is regulation, what is gene expression, and the structure of the lactose operon. If you have not checked out that video, please check it out that first. And then, now we see the working of this operon model. So, what happens in uh, how this operon works? Now, we'll take two scenarios. The first scenario is when there is no lactose in the cell. Uh, basically, uh, when there is no lactose in the solution, E. coli cells are there, but there is no lactose. Let's say some other sugar is there, lactose is not there. So obviously, when lactose is not there, in absence of lactose, let's say E. coli is utilizing, glucose is there in the solution. So uh, the E. coli cells will make enzymes for glucose metabolism. These genes will not be required. The enzymes for lactose utilization for lactose breakdown will not be required because the other sugar is present in the solution. So what will happen if lactose is not there? So we uh, know that this repressor protein is being made by the LACI gene. This is the actual regulatory gene. This is your DNA. So this LACI gene will make a protein. Obviously, transcription will happen. Translation will happen. And... Uh, in the presence of the, uh, sorry, in the absence of the lactose, this repressor protein will go and bind to the operator region. It'll go and bind where? To the operator region. Yes, let's say if the RNA polymerase is still over here, this repressor protein is has created a lock over here now. Clear? It has created a lock over here now. Repressor protein is active. Now what has happened to the operon? This, this RNA polymerase cannot move further. So the operon is off in the off position. So no RNA is being made. Okay. The RNA polymerase cannot move forward because there is an lock over here. When is this happening? When there is no lactose. You can see this, this empty okay this site is empty this has been a uh, locked uh, operator and the repressor protein they work in a lock and key mechanism now they have created a lock okay so now the rna polymerase cannot move forward so no transcription will take place why no transcription because no lactose is there so any which way is no requirement of these enzymes which will break down lactose okay so in absence of lactose the RNA polymerase cannot bind to the promoter properly and transcription is blocked. Okay, lactose is absent, repressor will be active and the operon is turned off. So what happens when there is a presence of lactose? So when there is lactose present, so now you have introduced E. coli cells into a solution having lactose. So in the presence of lactose, okay, now lactose has come into the solution. Now you can see over here, this is the lactose over here. Yeah, this is the lactose over here. It will act as a inducing molecule. It will open the lock which was over here. It will go and bind to the repressor which was here. It will go and bind to the repressor molecule and it will open the lock. It will cause the lactose repressor molecule to become inactive. To become inactive. Okay, now you can see the change in the shape. This was in the active position which, which, which created a temporary lock on the lactose or the operator region when the genes were not required. That is when lactose was absent, but now the lactose is present. You can see this green molecule, which is the lactose. This will act as an inducer, like a start induce to start the transcription of these genes because now lactose is there. So these uh, enzymes will be required. Okay. 
so this uh, uh, inducer will uh, lactose will come and it will bind to the repressor it will cause the repressor to become inactive okay lactose present repressor inactive now the operon becomes on now you see rna polymerase binds properly the the operon is on and you see like z like y like a that is all the enzymes are now transcribed and translated so mrna is made okay so the lac repressor is released in presence of lactose so this block is released this lock is opened uh, from the promoter uh, from the operator region and then rna polymerase can bind to the promoter and the transcription can take place and the transcription will occur so just a summary when no lactose the lac repressor binds tightly to the operator region not allowing the rna polymerase to transcribe and when lactose is present the lactose will come and bind to the repressor and it will cause the repressor to remove okay to become inactive from the operator side it will be removed so now the area is free now rna polymerase can easily transcribe the operon this is how the even the single uh, cell bacteria e coli regulates uh, its genes it's you know your the example we are talking only about the lactose definitely there are many many more examples and uh, all uh, all the genes are uh, you know regulated in this fashion whenever they are required they are turned on whenever they are not required then they are not uh, then there will be some sort of a uh, repressor uh, molecule or repression which will be created onto those uh, genes okay so that's all about the lactose rep uh, operon regulation in the next video we will be talking about dna fingerprinting this is the application part of the uh, dna uh, techniques okay how the dna can be used as a biomolecule to identify certain things so this is the application part last part of the chapter so in the next video we will be talking about dna fingerprinting till then keep revising thank you see you in the next video